So chapter six is about osseous tissue and bone structure. So in this chapter, we will talk about um, classification of the bones, structure of the bones, development of the bones, and also histology of the bones in general. Uh, also at the end, there will be some clinical examples on some specific conditions. Uh, so what is the skeletal system? The skeletal system is uh, mainly made of bones, uh, but there are also cartilages that are at the end of the bones or connecting to different bones. There are ligaments that, that are made of this regular connective tissue, and they are the ones that connect to different bones. There are also some other connective tissue that um, wraps around the joints and they are attached to the bones and uh, some of them also wrap around the bone, the bones themselves. Uh, the function of the skeletal system is very wide. It is for support of different organs, so different organs can attach to it um, by, through the ligaments. And there is also a protecting uh, vital organs, for example, brain is in the skull, a heart and lungs and major blood vessels are in the chest. So they are protected by the ribs and the sternum. Uh, also liver, for example, the spleen, uh, part of the uh, stomach is covered by the bones. Um, the part of the kidneys and the back, they are covered by the bones. And, uh, and majority of the pelvic organs are covered and protected by the bones. Um, it stores different minerals. The most important one is calcium salt, but there are some other ones also um, that we will talk about it when the time comes. Um, also, uh, as you age or, um, or as you get older, uh, lipids accumulate inside the bone. So that's the storage for uh, lipids as well. Uh, the bone marrow is the area that, uh, that blood is formed. Um, it's not just red blood cells, but other blood cells are also formed. Um, so that's an important uh, part of the normal uh, body function. And uh, muscles actually attached uh, to the skeletal system. So depends the, 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 the location of the muscles, uh, then the bones uh, help them uh, in a specific direction. So when the muscles contract, the body can move in a specific direction. Uh, there are different ways to classify the bone. One is on, based on the shape. So based on the shape, there are six different types of bones. One is called sutural bones. This is a small, so it's an irregular flat bone and they are located in the suture. So sutures are um, these joints between two uh, bones and the skull. So you do not see uh, this kind of bones anywhere else in the body, it's just in the, uh, in the skull. Uh, the clinical importance of this is that if somebody has a trauma, uh, then this bone can uh, push inside and it can cause uh, brain damage. Uh, and it can be in different locations, it's not necessarily here, it can be anywhere in the skull. Uh, the second type of bone, these are irregular bones, so they do not have any specific physical shape. A uh, good example is vertebrae, so this is the vertebrae that you can see it all the way here. Um, also you see it in some of the bones in the skull, so facial bones and the pelvic bones. So these are irregular, irregular bones. Uh, the thir third one is called short bones. So the short bones are uh, uh, short and thick. They are small in size. Uh, these are the carpal bones uh, that are in the rest area and also tarsal bones, T-A-R-S-A-L, that is in the ankle area. And then is the flat bones. Uh, flat bones have two parallel surfaces, surfaces that are you know, parallel to each other. They are flat. Um, and the location, you can see it in the skull. Uh, here is a, the sternum or the breastbone. Uh, the ribs. 
There is also this bone at the back, a shoulder blade or a scapula. We will discuss these names in chapter 7, so don't worry about it if you don't know the spelling. I uh, will talk about that later, okay? Uh, so these are the, the, the flat bones, okay? Um, there is the long bones, the, these are cylinder shape and the two ends are enlarged. And this is the area that uh, they um, create a joint uh, with another bone. So these are area that are mobile joints. Um, the main location of the long bones are on the limbs, so upper extremity and lower extremity. The last one is called sesamoid bones. These are small and flat. So the common one that you see, this is called patella. Um, uh, this is in the, in the knee. Uh, so these bones usually form in an area of, uh, uh, there is a tendon um, that's connection between a muscle and a bone um, or any other areas that is made of fibrous tissue and there is a lot of uh, irritation, physical irritation uh, they form. So sometimes if you're using your hand or feet uh, a lot, um, then it may, small bones may form there. It does not have any pathological uh, you know, importance, but um, that's how they are formed with increased uh, physical friction. Uh, classification of bone based on the bony markings. Um, I, I may not test this in details. I highly recommend you to study this. I don't want to just read this. Uh, it does not make any sense for me to just read some words. Um, these are very important uh, for chapter seven and eight. So I highly recommend you to uh, read these ones. So what are the meaning of uh, these terms? Because uh, some of these words may come in the exam um, and uh, it is a good idea to know it so you know the meaning of it. If you know the meaning of it, it is, makes it a lot easier to understand the rest of it. And this image is actually a, an image that is supporting the previous slide. So when you study, you go back and forth and, and, um, and compare the, the word and find that word here in this image. So. Um, I don't want to discuss this when we get to chapter 7 and 8, so then I will go through all of these uh, in more detail. So uh, classification of bone are based on the structure, so we will talk only about the long bones and the flat bones because these are the two most common bones in the body. Irregular bones are also common, but uh, they do not have any specific physical features, uh, so it will not be discussed here. So the long bones have three different parts. Uh, one is called diaphysis, so this long area that you see, this is called diaphysis or the shaft. Then there's another area uh, that is the ends, these two ends, and these are called epiphysis. There's two of them. This is the area that is covered by a cartilage and it articulates with another uh, joint, another bone, I mean, so that creates a joint. And in the middle, you have an area between the epiphysis and uh, the aphysis, and this is called metaphysis. Here and here, and normally when you are young, this area uh, is covered by cartilage, and this is how bone uh, grow and become longer. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, the, later in the puberty, uh, they fuse and be ossified or calcified, and then uh, the bone is formed, so the cartilage is gone. Um, so the area is difficult to see uh, normally by a naked eye or even by x-ray, you cannot see it once this area is closed. Another thing to, to look at is uh, the two different types of bones that are here. One is called the compact bone. This is really a hard bone. They are in the periphery. Uh, so they are really thick in the diaphysis but become thinner in this area, in the epiphysis, they become thinner. And the other type of uh, bone is uh, called the spongy bone. And they have these small holes there. I will show it to you later. Uh, they are located mainly in epiphysis in these areas. But also you can see it uh, in the middle. There's a cavity there that partially you can see it there as well. So the cavity that here between the compact bone 
is this is called medullary cavity and this is area that um, bone marrow is located in this area so it has a spongy bone uh, and also bone marrow is located uh, this is the structure of the flat bone so it has two surfaces so one surface here one surface is there in the periphery it is made of the a hard or compact bone and in the middle there is a spongy bone you see that uh, so it looks like a uh, you know a sandwich do you guys like a bony sandwich no okay it is covered also by the periosteum so on both sides is covered by periosteum um, that I will come back and talk about it uh, later on. So these are in the flat bones. You can uh, see it in the skull, for example, here, but also you can see it in the chest uh, bones. Um, so if you remember it, uh, the bone is a type of connective tissue, supporting connective tissue, and all connective tissues have three components. Uh, one is the cell, and the other one is um, the, the matrix and matrix is made of the different fibers and ground substance so here the matrix of the bone so we will not talk about the cells for now uh, the matrix of the bone has two parts one is the inorganic part and the second part is the organic part so what does it mean inorganic means this minerals so different um, calcium salts are making about two-thirds of the bone matrix and this is this is the calcium salts uh, is the one that um, you know is responsible for uh, bones to be very strong um, uh, so uh, the most important uh, calcium salts are calcium phosphates and they usually uh, combine with calcium hydroxide and they make this crystal and these are called hydroxyapatite so bon appetit. Uh, they also have some other um, you know, minerals that are there like sodium, potassium, uh, bicarbonate, um, magnesium, manganese, uh, and fluoride, iron. So there are some other ones are also there. And then is the organic one. So organic one is also called osteoid. Organic is called osteoid. So when we are talking about organic in general, so it means that they are made of either carbohydrate, uh, lipids, or uh, proteins, okay? But here in the bones, uh, we are not discussing about the lipids that much. Uh, these uh, organic uh, compounds are either uh, proteins or uh, carbohydrate or a mix of protein and carbohydrate. The most important one is the collagen fibers that are, that are made of proteins and if you remember it from chapter 4 uh, collagen fibers are flexible but they are very strong and they resist direction in one uh, they resist forces in one direction uh, so they are not stretchable they are not stretchable okay um, here if you can see the bones are made of different layers different layers looks like a uh, you know wedding uh, cake or birthday cake probably uh, so these are different layers and uh, in each layer you can see these collagen fibers are, are in a specific direction they run parallel to each other in each layer but when you go to the next layer then they are still uh, parallel to each other but they are running in a different direction and when you go to the different layer then it's a different direction so in each layer they resist forces in, in one specific direction but uh, because there are multiple layers so the bone uh, resisting uh, forces from multiple directions the second uh, type of uh, organic matrix is called glycosaminoglycan and proteoglycans Glycosaminoglycan is uh, carbohydrate and proteoglycan is a mix of carbohydrate and, and uh, protein and they uh, uh, absorb water. So that absorption uh, is uh, preventing uh, compression 
of the bone. For example, your stand uses a lot of weight, uh, but uh, your bones in, in your legs will not uh, shorten because uh, it resists um, compression. So, or the bones and vertebrae will not compress because of the water that is inside. The last one is called glycoprotein, and that's a mix of carbohydrate and protein together. Uh, and then this one is uh, connecting uh, the um, calcium salts with these other uh, co organic compounds with collagen and uh, proteoglycans. So this is combining the two together. Uh, so the third component of the um, uh, bone tissue is the bone cells, okay? And there's four different types of bone cells. Uh, the first one, uh, this is called osteogenic cells or osteoprogenitor, osteoprogenitor cells. These are uh, similar to stem cells and they make these um, osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are young cells and the function of the osteoblasts is to make the organic bone matrix, organic bone matrix. Okay, so this is the organic uh, bone matrix that is secreted. Once this is secreted, then they become calcified, so they become harder. Okay, once they become harder, they trap these osteoblasts and they become osteocyte. Okay, once they are trapped and the bone matrix is calcified, it becomes osteocytes. Osteocyte is a mature bone. The function of osteocyte is to maintain the bone. Osteoblast function is to make osteoid or bone matrix. Osteocyte is to maintain the bone. So um, how these uh, cells uh, get their nutrients? Um, they make it through this, okay, these small canals, these are called canaliculi. Uh, you see that they are surrounded, uh, the, surrounding the osteocytes and the nutrients through the blood vessels that are in the, either in the periosteum or inside the bone. Uh, these blood vessels are also run in the bone also. Uh, they, these nutrients go through these uh, small canaliculi and they reach the, these osteocytes. And the waste products are also released from these osteocytes to these um, canaliculi and then uh, they go back to the blood. So it's an indirect uh, way of getting nutrients. Um, the last one is uh, called osteoclast. So this is a very big cell. You can, uh, they have like 20, 21 nuclei, so multi-nuclear cell. And they work the same as a, like a macrophage. They produce uh, enzymes and acids, and that enzyme and acid that breaks the bone, release calcium uh, phosphate and other calcium salts, and that goes to the blood, and especially the calcium is important. Uh, that goes back to the blood, and that has a lot of different functions, and I will come back to that later. Now the structure of a, of a um, compact bone, okay? So before looking at all these things, look at this one. This is a long bone. And this is the compact area. If, uh, if you remember it, I talked about it a few minutes ago. This is the diaphysis of the compact bone. So this is the thick area of the shaft of the bone. So it's in the periphery. And in the middle, there's a cavity here. And this is the cavity that looks here. And that has a spongy bone here. Uh, so this in the periphery that you see this area is this area. OK. So uh, this is the long bone, and from here to here, this is called the long axis of the bone. Long axis of the bone. So now look at this area. So the bones are made of different layers. These layers are called lamella. So lamella is the plural form. Lamella is the singular form. The, the bones, the compact bones, are made of different layers. Okay, so. There's three different types of layers that are um, making the compact bones. Um, so this is one. This is called concentric. 
Constantine. Okay. Um, and in the middle, there is a cavity or a canal there, and that is called the central or a person canal inside. What is the content of central canal? Blood vessels and, and nerves and, and also lymphatics are there too, but not much. So there's blood vessels and nerves. Um, and the ostion is what? The ostion is this concentric lamellae and central canal together. So these two together, that makes the ostion. So this is one type of lamellae. The second type of lamellae is these ones. This one wraps around the whole bone like this. It wraps around the whole bone. Uh, these are called circumferential lamellae. Circumferential lamellae. So this one. Uh, there also should be around here, but it's not shown in this image. It should be some of them should be around here also, but it's not there. The third one is called interstitial lamellae. So this is the spelling, interstitial. These are between the concentric lamellae, and these are the old concentric lamellae. So these are the newer ones, and these are the old ones. So in between the newer concentric lamellae, this is the interstitial lamellae. Okay. Um, if you if I go back to the ostion, so you can also see this is central canal here. So this is central canal. This runs in the parallel to the longitudinal axis of the bone. This was the longitudinal axis, and these uh, central canals also run parallel to that. There is another canal that is called the perforating or Volsman canal. They are connecting the central canals here and also connecting central canals with the medullary cavity. And you can see that there is blood vessels and nerves are inside central canals and perforating canals. There is another issue here and you can see it here. This is a periosteum. So periosteum is made of two different layers and I will come back to that. And here, the image that you can see, that's the reason I'm showing it to you, because you cannot see this in the other picture. These are some fibers, and these are called Sharpies fiber or perforating fibers, and they are connecting the periosteum to the rest of the bone. Okay? Uh, this image, actually this image, I start with this image. These are the osteocytes. Osteocytes, these are the canaliculi. These lines that you see, these are the canaliculi. So they are connected to each other. And this one that you see, this is one here, and this is another one. These are lamellae. Each one is a lamella, so the whole thing is lamellae. So this is a concentric lamellae like this. And here is the central canal. They contains blood vessels and a nerve. And here inside, this is another type of tissue. And this is called endosteum, endosteum. This is periosteum, and this is endosteum, okay? And if you look at this image, again, same idea there. This is the concentric uh, lamellae, and these are the osteocytes, osteocytes, central canal here, and these are the content of the central canal. Look at, looking at this one, these dark, um, areas that you see, these are the osteocytes. These are small lines that you see like this. These are the canaliculi, and this is like a concentric lamellae, like this. Concentric lamellae. And here in the middle, this is the central canal, and that's the content of the central canal. So, what is a lacuna? Lacuna is actually a cavity that the uh, uh, osteocytes uh, are located there. Okay, a cavity that osteocytes are located there. So the second type of the bone, the spongy bone, if I come to this uh, image and I explain this image again, uh, they are made of different layers. Okay, different layers. These are lamellae, different lamellae, so concentric lamellae. These are made of the osteocytes. You see the osteocytes? And these lines that you see, these are the canaliculi, okay? These canaliculi open up here, and these are the dots that you see. These are the opening of these canaliculi. 
The only difference here is that there's no central canal here. Uh, these uh, canalic, uh, these um, trabeculae, uh, which is means the network uh, is covered by a type of tissue, and this is called endosteum. Endosteum. So this whole thing is here. This one. If you cut one of these, it looks like this. So multiple layers of bones, concentric lamellae, made of osteocytes and it's covered by endosteum. So it's a, like, like a branches of trees, so it's going all over everywhere. But here in the middle, there is a cavity, there is opening here in, in the middle. And that is um, covered by something. So where, what is it covered? Uh, it's covered by a, a red bone marrow. And red bone marrow is the one that makes the red blood cells and other um, cells in, uh, from in the blood and contains also blood vessels that carry uh, those uh, blood cells uh, back to the blood. And as you age, uh, some of these uh, uh, areas are filled with fat and, and that becomes a yellow bone marrow. So uh, at the younger age, most of the bones have red bone marrow. As you get older, it changes. Uh, some of them will remain uh, like, like flat bones remain and it will contain red bone marrow uh, but the uh, long bones uh, will change and it will contain fat. And the location of the spongy bones, as I said before, it can be in epiphysis or it can be in the medullary cavity. So there is two different layers that uh, covers different parts of the bone. One is called periosteum. So pari means around, uh, osteum means bone. So uh, this is the periosteum, this thing that you see. It's made of two different layers, okay? Uh, one is the inner layer that you can see here, and this in inner layer contains, um, uh, you know, osteogenic cells, uh, and these osteogenic cells are important in bone growth and development, and also if there is any fracture, um, these osteogenic cells make new osteoblasts and repair the bone. Another one is this one, the outer layer, and the outer layer is uh, uh, made of dense irregular connective tissue. Uh, so that uh, tissue is connected with the muscles, uh, superficial to the bone, and it will continue with the tendon of the muscle and also with the uh, joint capsule. Okay, uh, so this periosteum covers most of the bones except the area that is covered by the cartilage. That is the area that is actually uh, inside the joint capsule that is important for the movement of the bones. And as you can see here, uh, the periosteum contains uh, blood vessels, also contains nerves and uh, lymphatics, uh, which is not shown here. And um, there is also sharpie fibers that are connecting the periosteum to the rest of the bone. And these cells that you see, these are osteocyte. So this is part of the bone itself. And these lines are canaliculi. Um, so endosteum is uh, uh, located in the inside of different parts of the bone. So three, three different areas. One is in the medullary cavity. Um, uh, in, the, in the long bones, uh, also in the trabeculae of the spongy bones and in the central canal of the long bones. So these are three different areas that endosteum is located. Uh, it is, uh, this is the endosteum, so um, it's made of the osteogenic cells. And actually, osteogenic cells are also located in the uh, endosteum. So this is the endosteum, so um, you have osteogenic cells are also there. You have the osteoclasts that are there and these osteoclasts break the bone and finally uh, these osteogenic cells can convert to osteoblasts and osteoblasts will uh, make osteoid which is the bone matrix and uh, once the bone is made then it's calcified and you will have the osteocyte. So osteocyte is not part of the endosteum. Uh, it is important for bone growth because it has the osteoprogenitor or osteogenic cells, the same 
it's the same thing osteogenic osteoprogenitor is the same thing and um, it is it has osteoblasts so again that's important for bone growth and if there is any kind of fracture then these two cells are important for uh, repair osteoclasts actually also um, repair the bone at the later part is for bone remodeling I will talk about this later uh, so the, the bone formation and growth there are two different stages of uh, bone formation uh, one is ossification it means that the bone matrix is formed um, and uh, you know osteocytes are, are there now after the bone matrix is formed um, then is the calcification part which is the calcium precipitates uh, ossification has two different stages one is called endochondral and the other one is uh, intramembranous endochondral is coming from cartilage and that's why they call it cartilage bones and most of the bones are made of uh, you know from cartilage the second one is called intramembranous and that is coming from a fibrous membrane this is actually a um, mesenchymal a membrane which means that it is an embryonic type of connective tissue and that mesenchymal cell can convert to a, a primary bone that's why they are called a mem membrane bone or membranous bone uh, the examples of these are clavicle or collar bones and some of the cranial bones after the ossification take place either uh, through the cartilage or through the fibrous membrane then the calcium precipitate and that is calcification and that makes the bone uh, harder and stronger so let's talk about the endochondral ossification first the images these images might be a little bit different from the textbook but uh, it's the same idea uh, so the uh, in the, in, in the endochondral calcification, they are made of hyaline cartilage. This is three types of cartilage. One of them is hyaline cartilage, so this is chapter uh, four again. Uh, so here in this area, if you look at it, you have the perichondrium. Perichondrium is wrapping around the uh, cartilage. It's made of two layers. Uh, one is a fibrous layer, and the other one is a cellular layer. And uh, there should be here, it's not shown here, there should be a stem cells these stem cells convert and uh, becoming a chondroblast and chondroblasts are re releasing uh, you know cartilage matrix and uh, once the cartilage matrix is formed then the chondrocytes are trapped there in the lacunas these are the cavities and these are chondrocytes there uh, so the all over in this area all over is something like this uh, but as the you know, fetus uh, grows, um, then these stem cells convert and become uh, osteogenic cells. So now osteogenic cells will make osteoblast. And osteoblast will make what? Will make a um, bone matrix here. So uh, now the bone matrix is formed here and then it's calcified. So calcium precipitates and the osteocytes are trapped there and now this is actually a bonus form there so this bone is formed around this area uh, in the diaphysis and these are called the bone collar uh, if you remember uh, cartilage is one of the tissues that does not have direct blood supply uh, so it's avascular so when these uh, bones are formed here in the periphery so there is nothing new nutrients are coming through diffusion and these uh, you know, chondrocytes that were, that were here they die and they leave these cavities here so these are the cavities that remain and this looks like this now okay uh, so then the blood vessels come to the area the blood vessels and, and the diaphysis comes here and this um, you know the uh, osteoblasts are formed and, and then it's calcified and osteocytes are formed here um, so then is this area become the primary ossification center so first um, you know, bones are formed here and then the once the um, osse uh, once the um, bone matrix is formed then it's ossified so uh, bone ossification center 
is happening here. Calcification means before calcification, but calcification will take place. Uh, also, the same idea happens in the, in the epiphysis. So blood vessels comes here. These are the secondary ossification standards. So uh, bones also form here, and then it's ossified. And finally, the periphery uh, of the diaphysis becomes thicker. And this is making the compact bone inside. There are some changes will happen because of the osteoclast activity. These are osteoclasts. So this is the bone marrow is formed there. There is a, this is very vascular, this area. This is where the uh, blood is formed. And in the, perif in, in the epiphysis that you can see, uh, this is a spongy bone is there. So there's no medullary cavity uh, and blood is still formed here. Uh, the two ends, you know, still will have cartilage because this cartilage is important for uh, movement of the bone. Otherwise, if two bone contact to each other, uh, there's a lot of friction and damage, inflammation will happen. But uh, these cartilages are actually preventing any kind of damage in the bone when you when you're moving your joints. Uh, and also in this area, this is a, it's called epiphyseal plate or epiphyseal growth plate. Uh, this is where the bones, um, new bones are formed, and the bones are elongated, so becoming longer in these two areas. When you are young, this, this area is open, and later on, this area fuses and then calcified. So this is the histology picture of an endochondral calcification. This area is the cartilage area. This is the cartilage matrix, and this area that you see, um, these are the lacunas. Inside the lacunae, you have um, uh, chondrocytes. You have chondrocytes here. Uh, then um, you have the osteoblasts around this area. These are the osteoblasts, and they uh, release bone matrix. So this pink area that you see, this is the bone matrix. Okay, and the osteoclasts. Uh, hard to see it in this image. Uh, they create this kind of cavity, this irregular cavity, and that is the uh, you know, initial part of the medullary cavity. So initially uh, it creates like this, and then they join and become bigger and bigger. Um, there's two ways that uh, bones grow uh, under endochondral ossification. One is called a positional growth, it means that the thickness of the bone become uh, you know increased or the, the, the bone become thicker uh, if you look at this image uh, here you see the um, periosteum here in the periphery and these are the circumferential lamellae periosteum contains uh, a cellular layer that i told you before and that cellular layer has osteogenic cells and these osteogenic cells will make uh, a new layer, okay? A new layer of uh, circumferential lamellae. And another thing is that the periosteum also have blood vessels. So there's two things here. One contains blood vessel, the other one has osteogenic cells, and those osteogenic cells will make new circumferential lamellae. Once these new circumferential lamellae are made, uh, they are wrapped gradually around these blood vessels. You can see that they're wrapped around the blood vessels and now it's making a concentric lamellase. From circumferential, concentric, you have a, still have the central canal here and this central canal together with the concentric lamellae will be what? The osteon. So new osteons are formed from uh, circumferential lamellae. So the bones become thicker over time. Also, the bone become longer, uh, so uh, the part that is responsible for that, that is the epiphyseal growth plate um, or cartilage growth plate, depends on um, the source that you read is the same meaning. And so this is in the uh, metaphysis in this area. So there's a cartilage there, and the cartilage glow, grows and going this way, going this way, and this area become calcified, 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 ossified, and then calcified, okay? So uh, then the new bones are formed here and the bone become longer and longer and longer like that. Until this area is open and the person grows. 
uh, once this area is closed, then the person does not grow. So uh, uh, women uh, are, uh, you know, more this area and women are more susceptible for uh, in hormones. So when the estrogen uh, is released during uh, puberty, uh, this area is more sensitive to estrogen, and that's why it fuses faster. Uh, in, in, in men um, or in boys, it doesn't, uh, what happens that um, this area is not as sensitive to testosterone. So this area will stay open longer. So this is why in majority of the cases, not all the time, but the majority of the cases, uh, men have uh, have a higher, you know, they have a higher height or they are taller than, than, than women. That's the reason because of uh, this problem that uh, in women, this cartilage is more sensitive to uh, sex hormones. Uh, so before I talk about uh, epiphyseal line, let me talk about the x-ray. So x-ray is a 2D black and white image. Uh, so when the x-ray uh, radiation passes through the tissue, uh, the absorption is different. If it is, uh, the tissue is solid, this is more absorption. And you can see that the bones have a lot of calcium, they are solid, so there is more absorption. When there is more absorption, the area looks whiter. And if it is a soft tissue or if there is a fluid or air, there is less and less and less absorption, uh, so the area looks a little bit grayish because this is a soft tissue, these muscles are there, and here is air, so it's very, very dark. Uh, so um, now if you take an x-ray, you can uh, see the difference between uh, a person that is younger and the person that's a little bit older. So when you are younger, these epiphyseal growth plates are still open. These arrows are not very accurate. Um, so these are still open uh, and uh, the cartilage is not calcified so that's why it, it looks grayish in color but once the person um, grows and uh, these cartilages fuse and become ossified uh, and calcified then these arrows are not accurate okay so it should be this area this area this area this area uh, this is actually accurate, but it's a little bit, still a little bit open here, and uh, this area. So these are the ones that are uh, closed, are mostly closed um, epiphyseal growth plate. So it means that this person may not grow much, but this person is still growing. So this is important for a chronological age. So if some uh, patient comes and um, you know you want to know the age of that person's chronological age and biological age, um, that way uh, you know uh, if the person is still has a chance to grow or the person has already grown and will not grow much. Also depends on some, uh, uh, you know, for criminal records, if you find some bones, uh, they can take an x-ray, um, so then it can be used uh, to determine the age of the, the person that died and um, that way uh, it can be used for criminal investigation. Endochondral ossification. So uh, we are still in that. So how the bones mature. So an infant, um, the this is the part that is the compact part and this is the periosteum around it and this is the medullary cavity. So you can see the bone is very thin uh, but circumferential lamellae are added and that's making the bone thicker and thicker, okay? So the circumferential lamellae are added here, uh, becoming thicker and thicker throughout the adulthood. Uh, and that circumferential lamellae is, you know, is under the periosteum. But something else happens here, there's a lot of osteoclasts are there and these osteoclasts are destroying the, the bone uh, because the, the body needs the calcium and the bone marrow also over time increase in size. So as you are, a person is very young and the person becomes older and older and older, and the thickness of the, the wall of the bone or the compact bone increase, but also the medullary cavity size increase as well. Intramembranous ossification. So it's a little bit different here. You have these mesenchymal cells 
and these mesenchymal cells, the, these are embryonic cells, they convert and they become osteoblasts. So the function of the osteoblast is making uh, some collagen fibers, okay, and also making this um, bone matrix or osteoid. Once these bone matrix are made and calcified, then these osteoblasts trap here and that become osteocyte. So uh, in the periphery, these mesenchymal cells are becoming more organized and they form periosteum. Now the blood vessels come here, so the, some of them will stay in the periosteum, some of them go in the middle of the area that were uh, making uh, some bones. These are called woven bones because they are irregular in shape, they are soft, they are not uh, very well organized. Um, and um, uh, you know, but uh, it is uh, different than, than the periosteum, very different than the periosteum. So they, they have different cavities and um, this is uh, something that will uh, convert to the uh, lamellar bone. So this lamellar bone is more organized here. Um, these cavities increase and they will make this spongy bone in the middle and in the periphery it will create a compact bone. So this is very different than, than the woven bone that is very weak. Also this area uh, of the periosteum changes and they become two different layers. The superficial layer that is the dense irregular connective tissue and the inner layer that is a cellular layer and that contains osteogenic cells that can be used later for growth and repair. The blood supply of the bone, the bone is very vascular compared with cartilage which is not vascular at all. Um, most bones have at least one blood supply. Uh, so here you can see that the blood supply entering the bone or leaving the bone in the middle in the diaphysis area and, uh, and inside the medullary cavity is very, very vascular, but also uh, you can see the vascularization in the epiphysis area. Some bones that are very big, they can also have uh, their own blood supplies in the epiphysis area. So not a lot, but some bones may have that. For example, femur in the, in the legs. And, and not in the legs, in the, in the thigh area. Uh, so bone remodeling. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you know you need the calcium so when you need the calcium uh, bones are a big reserve of calcium in the body so that calcium from the bones they are released and that goes to the blood or sometimes when you do not need uh, too much calcium that calcium goes from the blood and precipitates on the bone so this happens throughout life all the time and this uh, this whole concept is called bone remodeling when, the, when there is more deposition of calcium happens uh, to the bone, the bones become uh, stronger, okay? And if the calcium is removed from the bone, then the bones become weaker. So this is the process that happens. If the level of calcium decreases, the pre-osteoclast, that becoming osteoclast, osteoclasts are uh, releasing enzymes and acid, and that will cause bone resorption. Bone resorption means calcium, uh, I mean, the, uh, yeah, calcium is released from the bone. It means that the bone is destroyed and that goes to the blood. So that takes about two to three weeks. And then these monocular cells are coming and uh, they stop the activity of osteoclast. And at the same time, the pre-osteoblast come to the area and they convert to osteoblast. Now these osteoblast will, uh, release bone matrix now the ossification happens then this bone matrix are calcified then the osteocytes are formed and this area is healed so this takes this process takes about three months roughly okay this is not exact science uh, it's two to three weeks here two to three months here uh, average three weeks here and uh, three months here and the same process can continue again and again and again. So if you exercise, uh, then the, you are contracting the muscles and the muscles are becoming stronger and there's a pull of the muscle on the bone, there's a pressure built on the bone and the more pressure builds on the bone, uh, then the bones are becoming thicker and stronger. 
uh, but on the other hand if you do not do any kind of physical activity your uh, muscles become weaker so it means there is less contraction on the on the bones and uh, when this that happen uh, the bone become also weaker and thinner so uh, just it takes a few weeks for the bone to uh, become very weak uh, so physical activity is very important all the time uh, there is different um, nutrients and different hormones that are important for normal bone growth and development calcium and uh, phosphate uh, especially calcium is really really important and that's why you have to take regular calcium uh, through food um, there is also other minerals that are there like magnesium, manganese, iron, fluoride there is also sodium and potassium are there that are important for the bone uh, growth and maintenance there are some vitamins uh, of the vitamins, vitamin A stimulate osteoblasts so osteoblasts as you know it makes the um, bone matrix of B12 and vitamin K uh, these are the ones that are important for uh, formation of other types of uh, proteins in the bone and vitamin C is really important because it differentiates uh, pre-osteoblast to osteoblast and also stimulate osteoblast to make bone matrix so vitamin C is really important for the bone formation um, there's also hormonal factors that are there so uh, one is uh, calcitriol and calciferol. This is something that you should remember from chapter 5. Uh, these are uh, uh, especially the calcitriol is the end product of vitamin D uh, that is con uh, has been converted uh, from cal uh, calciferol uh, in the kidney. So calciferol in the when it goes to the liver and changes to uh, uh, intermediate metabolite and then it goes to the kidney and that makes calcitriol and that is important for absorption of calcium and phosphate from uh, intestine and also reabsorption of calcium from the kidney uh, bone uh, for uh, bone growth uh, growth hormone is also important and that is uh, for uh, increasing uh, mitosis in the cells okay it is in all other cells but also in the in the skeletal system thyroxin is increase is important for increasing metabolic activity of different tissues so it is very important um, for development so if somebody has a decreased level of growth hormone or thyroxin during childhood this person will be short uh, sex hormones like estrogen or androgen which is testosterone for example um, these are also important for bone growth and development because they stimulate osteoblast uh, calcitonin and parathyroid hormones they are important for balance of calcium and i will talk about it in a uh, talk about it in a couple of minutes um, so why calcium so calcium is really important for the body because um, the uh, nervous system activity depends on the calcium when the time comes I will tell you how also the muscle activity and contraction especially the heart muscles uh, need calcium all other muscles also need it but the heart is you know is vital um, so uh, these two uh, very important so if there is a decreased level of calcium then the person will have muscle weakness um, or they may have uh, arrhythmia which is ir irregular heartbeat there's also different um, enzymatic activities uh, that are important inside the cell and they require calcium. So uh, when the body needs calcium, the level of calcium decreases. This is why calcium should be released from the bone. So the health of, health of bone becomes a secondary issue for the body. So the other normal homeostasis is becoming more important at that time. So um, the level of calcium in the body is, is really important. It's, it's a very short or narrow uh, normal range for homeostasis. If the level of calcium decreases, okay, then the parathyroid uh, hormone is released from the parathyroid gland. And that will cause what? It will go to the bone and activating osteoclast um, indirectly 
um, and uh, the Ashley class, as you know, it will cause re uh, release of uh, acids and enzyme, and that will damage the bone that cause bone resorption and the calcium goes to the blood and the calcium level increase in the blood. Another one is it can cause increased absorption of calcium in the intestine that will also cause increase in the blood uh, calcium and the third one it will cause reabsorption of calcium from the kidney which means this decreased calcium loss in urine. Uh, at the same time, the parathyroid hormone increases calcitriol, and the calcitriol is important for absorption of calcium uh, from the gastrointestinal system and reabsorption of calcium from the kidneys. So all these three mechanisms will cause increase in the calcium level. Once the calcium level increases, this will inhibit release of parathyroid hormones. Everything goes back to normal. If the level of calcium is high, what will happen? Uh, the parafarricular cells from thyroid gland, see this thyroid, not parathyroid, from thyroid gland release calcitonin. So calcium actually means calcium. So it's an easy way to remember it. So this is a, uh, in response to increased calcium level. Uh, this will cause inhibition of the osteoclast. And if the osteoclasts are inhibited, then the bone resorption will not take place. And the osteoblasts that are there, it will cause increased bone formation and when more bone is formed then more calcium precipitate in the bone and the bone becomes thicker and stronger. Another one is the decreased uh, ab absorption of calcium from the intestine and decreased calcium absorption, reabsorption from the kidney. So more calcium is lost in the kidney. Also the level of calcitriol decreased in the kidney so it is uh, again it has less uh, effect on the intestine, on the kidney for reabsorption of calcium. And so all these mechanisms together, what will happen? The calcium level will decrease. Uh, so if there is a fracture, there is a four different stages that will happen, okay? Now the first stage is that uh, when uh, there is a damage in the bone, these uh, bones also damage the blood vessels, so the blood is released here, and that will create hematoma. So hematoma is a collection of blood anywhere in the body, and in this case is in the bone. So here you can see that uh, the, the blood is also accumulating under the periosteum and inside the medullary cavity. If these um, areas are really sharp, the edges of these bones, it can actually rupture the periosteum, and sometimes it ruptures the skin and the blood comes out. But most of the time it doesn't do that. So the small bones that are here, they usually die. These small pieces, they usually die. Uh, but because there's blood vessel, the blood vessel will grow back and then makes a specific type of tissue. Uh, and uh, that type of tissue is called a soft callus. Soft callus is made of chondroblasts and also fibroblasts. So these fibroblasts are releasing or making these uh, collagen fibers. It's a specific type of tissue that you can see uh, only during um, bone uh, repair when, when the bone is fractured. So that is not a good uh, and a strong tissue so it has to convert to the bone. Uh, so here there is the area become more vascularized and the soft bone is formed here. This is the spongy bone that is soft the, and is formed here uh, so this osteoblast are making new bones and then this area become calcified. But uh, this is not, again, this is not strong enough and, and this is called bone callus. It's not strong enough and does not have the, the same shape the bone had before. So the bone has to remodel. And for that you need uh, osteoclasts. So osteoclasts will remove extra bone under the periosteum, extra bone in the medullary cavity, and also the osteocytes are formed here in the, in the periphery, in the compact area of the bone. So the bone become back to the same level it was. So it depends on the person, depends on the age. Uh, this may take uh, six months uh, to one year. Normally after three months, you, you usually don't feel it, uh, but uh, the actual repair still continues. The bone remodeling will continue for a while. So these are some clinical uh, 
features that you can see of different fractures. This is called transverse fracture. So um, the, the, the two ends are not separated, but uh, it's like this. So it's a transverse uh, or uh, perpendicular to the long axis of the bone. Displaced uh, fracture means the two ends are totally separated. So during the repair, uh, you can uh, you actually have to uh, pull uh, the, 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 that limb and connect these two bones together. So otherwise, they will fuse like this, and that's not a good news. Compression fracture, it happens in the vertebrae. So this is actually one vertebra here, and you can see this is the thickness of the vertebra, but this is so narrow. So this is the other vertebra. So you can see that this is compressed. This happens the most commonly in osteoporosis, but you can have in tuberculosis and also in cancer. A spiral fracture is twisted like this. Okay, this is like twist. Um, so this kind of fracture happens in contact sports and dancing, martial arts, uh, you know, soccer, football, things like that. So contact sports is mainly the one that causing this kind of uh, fractures. And if the person uh, during impaction uh, twists and falls, then it will cause that kind of fracture and it's a little bit harder to uh, fix. Uh, then is that uh, fracture that is common in children and that is called uh, the green stick fracture and uh, the whole bone does not break but only part of the bone breaks uh, and this is this area so because the, the bones of the children are soft and they are not uh, fully calcified so that's why it only partial part of it breaks but please don't uh, go and, and find a child and, and don't uh, um, you know, practice this to see if the bone of a child is soft or not. Okay, do not do that. Don't try that at home. Uh, Collis fracture is if you fall with outstretched hand. Outstretched hand. Uh, so this is the one of the bones in, in the forearm. Uh, so the distal part of that bone this is called radius. Radius. This is where it fractures. Uh, and uh, in the, the epiphyseal fracture, this is the epiphyseal part of the bone, so it means that uh, if this part is still growing in, in a child or a younger uh, a teenager, then that's a problem because the area is still open, so that bone now becomes calcified and one part of the body will be longer, the other part will be shorter, and that's not a good news. So this is actually in the lower limb, so this is a knee area, that's not a good area, to, the, the bone has fractured. Uh, then is the path fracture, and this is in the uh, ankle area, so again these are the two bones in the, in the uh, leg, and it's fractured around here. And finally this is comminuted fracture, which means that um, bone has uh, fractured into smaller pieces and uh, sometimes the sharp area f you know, ruptures the skin and the blood comes out and that's an open fracture that is more difficult to um, treat. And finally uh, the effect of aging on the bone so as you age uh, uh, your bone uh, is decreased um, and uh, there is an increase in bone loss uh, usually happens around uh, at age 35 or so. Uh, that is the time you know, plus minus five years. Um, there is two different terminology there. One is called osteopenia, and this means the one standard deviation below normal. And the second one is called osteoporosis, which is a two and a half standard deviation below normal. Uh, women are much more uh, likely to have osteopenia and osteoporosis than men. Uh, both of them will have it, but more, women are more likely. The reason is that uh, women uh, go through menopause and their hormones decrease rapidly, but uh, in men, uh, the testosterone is still there, and if somebody is around 70 or 80, they may still have some testosterone level, um, so they still lose a bone, but um, their loss is more gradual. The area that uh, there is a loss taking place, one is called epiphysis. Uh, this is the end of the long bones. The one that you can see it clinically in, in the hospital uh, is usually the, the femur area or the hip bone. So if you see a, 
an older lady came with a fracture of a hip bone that's the most likely cause is uh, osteoporosis this is what you see in the hospital uh, another one is the vertebrae this is actually the most common location of osteoporosis the picture that we saw the x-ray image this is the one uh, but um, clinically you will not see this that much because this is very gradual and this is why um, if you notice it the height of grandma and grandpa usually decrease um, than, than when they were at the younger age um, and that's because of the com compression fracture uh, of the vertebrae most of them does not have any pain and there is also you can see it in the jaws and this is why uh, as you become older you may lose some teeth that's because of the osteoporosis this is one reason okay this is multiple other reasons for that but this is one of the reasons for um, tooth loss uh, you do not have to memorize any of these percentages but uh, you can see that over age of 45 about one third of women uh, have uh, uh, osteoporosis and one-fifth of men may have osteoporosis so you do not need to memorize that but just to give you an idea how common it is and if you do exercise and if you take proper uh, nutri nutrition uh, proper nutrients uh, have proper nutrition uh, then uh, the risk of osteoporosis decrease uh, there is also hormones if you want if, if a person wants to take it but that's a different issue because it may increase risk of some cancer so that's controversial and if you have any question please ask me uh, so why there's a bone loss because uh, uh, decreased level of estrogen and androgen in both uh, women and men and that's why it's happening at the later part uh, of life so uh, in the middle middle of the life and then after that and it's more common in women because uh, after menopause there is a sudden decrease and uh, even loss of total um, estrogen level so these women may need um, uh, hormone replacement therapy if they are not at increased risk of uh, breast or endometrial cancer and if you have any question please ask me and thank you for listening